Hi guys, hope you're doing really well. Today I'm going to show you how I record my bass for these YouTube lessons. If you've seen my videos before, you might have seen recently me using a 1982 Ibanez Roadster. I literally just did a video on Bernard Edwards' Dance, 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 which is why I'm using this bass. This is a 1978 Music Man Stingray. And looking around, there's loads of basses behind you. I'll show you those another time. But it doesn't matter what bass I use. I'm going to start with the bass, you know, whichever bass I have, it's set up well, that's the main thing, okay? So if I play this... There are no buzzers anywhere. The action on my bass, this one's actually sort of, I would say, medium. It's not too low, but, but most of the basses I have, I've got them set up so that I'm not getting any buzz. I don't like buzzes, um, nor do I like an action that's too high that's going to prevent me from, from flying around the neck the way I want to, okay? So action and bass setup is incredibly important, as is intonation, okay? You really can't do anything after a bass, you know, in terms of fixing things if it isn't in tune and if it isn't set up well. So this this just doesn't matter. That Ibanez, by the way, is a very cheap bass and it's set up very well. It got plecked, actually, so all the frets are really nice and smooth and you know, it plays, it plays really well. So that's the first thing. I always use this um, evidence audio cable. I think it's a Lyric HG. I think that's what it's called. So I go from that, I go into an Avalon U5 DI. Now I do lots of online remote recording. I've done that for over 10 years. And this is the thing that I've used all throughout that. I get a lot of questions about compression, EQ, amps, things like that. If you've heard any of my YouTube videos, uh, I've never used an amp. I've got a 1966 Ampeg B15 over here, and behind me you can just sort of see it there. It's a 77, I think, Fender Basement amp. Two revered recording amps, and they're brilliant. But I'm in a setup here where I can't really make too much noise, so this is what I do. And this is what I do for recording as well. The, the Avalon goes into an Universal Apollo 8. This is your analog to digital converter and do not skimp on that especially if you want to go into this you know if you want to do serious recording your di and your audio interface needs to be really good quality there are there are so many it doesn't have to be what i've got by the way and it doesn't have to be this expensive it just has to be to a decent standard Th those are the secret weapons if you like to the to the tone i don't really have anything set on the avalon it's all flat um, this particular bass, two-band EQ, I've actually got the bass up quite a bit and the treble up a little bit. Otherwise, EQ on basses for me, I tend to go flat. And I, I, it's, a, it's boring, I know, but I tend, my signal tends to go flat. If I'm sending a signal to, to, to an artist or a producer or an engineer, as I do all the time, I will give them the Avalon signal, which to me, I think of that as a very transparent, very clean almost boring signal it's just the sound of the bass what I will then do is I'll come out of that I'm actually going into how I record not just YouTube lessons I'll come out of that into a second channel now that's traditionally where you would have it going into an Ampeg or something like that but what I do is I'll take it into a uh, Monique by Jewel handmade tube preamp here and that will be my second signal. So I'll dirty that up a bit. Sometimes I'll do different things with that. Sometimes I'll use a plugin. Sometimes I'll use the Universal Audio, um, you know, Ampeg emulations are really good. I'll often use that to give two signals. So if I give it to a client, they'll have a very clean and a somewhat character, characterful, vibey sound. They can use one, use the other. I think what people mostly do, and they don't always tell me, is take the simple signal and add their own EQ, add their own compression. Okay, here. There's no EQ or compression. Like, if I come over here, show you this. This is the console. This is the Universal Audio console, they call it. And this is the the plugin that I'm using. So there's a unison strip here where you can place one of the Universal Audio emulations. And I've got the this here. This is an API vision channel strip. 
it's got compressors, EQs, all kinds of things. Everything is bypassed there. I've got no compression. I've got no EQ. You're only hearing the EQ from the bass here. It's very, very important to set the levels correctly. This is live or in the studio or doing a video like this. On Logic, you've got this scale, DBFS, D, uh, was it decibel full scale, I think it stands for. When you get to minus 18 on this scale, it's zero on an analog piece of gear, okay? That's the mistake I think a lot of people make is try to get close to zero in the digital realm. Never do that, okay? Loudest I'm ever playing on this is not getting anywhere near zero because that point you get digital distortion. You can also go the analog route where you, you know, but I haven't done that really. Apart from I've got the, you know, the Avalon there and the and the dual monique i will always try to hit sort of minus 18 on that scale i know that that sounds good and peaking a little bit above that okay that's very important not to not to go too far over that so i've got a nice bass that's set up i've got a very a pretty high quality quite expensive cable i've got decent cables everywhere apart from that it's very very simple i like to change the tone through my hands <laughs> This bass sounds the way it does, okay? If you've seen some of my other videos and you've heard my 75 Jazz or my 78 P bass, they have their own character, okay? You cannot get this bass to sound like a P bass. It's not going to do it. That's why I've got different examples of, you know, the sort of common bass tones that either a client wants or I, I want to play. So the questions I really get commonly asked most, strings. These are Elite players. I use Elite strings, they're really good. I use either the nickel ones, nickel plated, or the stainless steel ones, which I have on this. Compressors and EQs come up a lot. I, honestly, I think a lot of people think those are the magic bullets. I think they think that an EQ and compressor is the answer to, to you know, the tone quest. And do go on that quest, by the way. I'm not saying not to do that, but I would I would guard against getting too obsessed with gear. I say that having lots of bases and lots of gear, but it, my setup, as you've seen, is pretty simple. I don't use any EQ or compression. I'm not saying don't, by the way, because a good knowledge of how to use that will, will serve you well. If you're if you're recording online, your bass is going to be dumped into a mix, and a mixing engineer is going to mix it. Okay. They don't want effects. They don't want a heavy sound. They just want a good sound that sits in the mix. That's why that's why I've got these basses that I know they sound decent in the mix. I give it to, to the client completely unmixed, unfiltered, and they can go to town on it. I then have that second signal if they do want something else. I will sometimes use effects, but it's very rare that people want that. I'm just saying it how it is. But for these videos, I'm not using any compression, any EQ or anything like that. I love effects. And I think you should know how to use them, but also know that as a bass player, really what most people want is they want you to provide a really solid, fundamental, low end, play in time, play with taste. And, and that really is it. I love, I've got lots of effects. You just need to know when to use them. So if you do want any other videos, perhaps showing how to use an EQ or a compressor, then, you know, do ask me or, you know, effects. It's fun to use that. And certainly there are some songs that you're going to play live and recording where you're going to need those tones. So, you know, that would perhaps be a good idea for some other videos. So if you want to see those, do subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.